I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear Reverend Fathers, dear faithful, in any given situation in our life, there are two things that can happen. Either the situation will remain the same, or the situation will change. If you have a job, either you will continue to have the job, or you will not have a job, you'll have a different job. Or if you, if you have your house or your apartment, you either continue to have the, the house, or you will not continue to have the house, one or the other. This, can, this is the way, way it works with, with everything in, in our lives. And we all know that, that there are some things that change or stay the same without us being able to control it. There's a lot of things in our life that we don't have control over. But at the same time, we do have a certain control over our lives. And, and what we must try to do in, with, with whatever's happening in our life is, is manage things staying the same or things changing. If, if what we're doing is bad, then we need to change. Change is good. If, if what we're doing is good, we must want that to continue. We must want to continue doing the good things. So, so change is good if what we're doing is not good and, and we, we need to, to switch to something good. Um, but change is bad if, if we're doing the good thing and we switch and start doing the bad thing. And you know that we give a special word to those who have the capacity to remain the same in doing the good. They're doing the right thing, and they manage to persevere in doing that right thing. We call this the virtue of perseverance. And it's harder to practice this important virtue of perseverance to the degree that life is unstable. Perseverance is about stability, stability in the good. And that becomes harder to the degree that things are in turmoil. And I think that's, that's why we, in, in, in our age, find stability harder. We find it harder to be stable than people of the past. Our world is in turmoil. Um, the political situation, there's so much division in our country. Um, everything's been turned upside down in, in the Catholic Church. And also with, with all of the technologies that have come into our lives. I mean, a, a lot of us are, uh, especially of someone of my age, are living a, a very different life uh, than, they, than they were when they grew up be, because now you have all these technologies. You have the, the internet, which you didn't used to have before. You have the personal computer, which you didn't used to have before. So because of this, of this turmoil that exists in our lives, it's harder today for us to remain constant in the good. And so it might be good for us to consider today some obstacles to our perseverance and how we can manage to persevere. What are some of the things that might come along in our lives and would cause us to stop doing the good thing that we have been doing and start doing something evil, to become bad? And you know, this is, this is what happens. Sometimes we see people and we're like, what happened to them? They used to be so good, what happened? Well, something came along in their lives and sidetracked them, derailed them from doing what was good and they started becoming evil. One thing that can happen is that we cave to human respect. We're around good people, and in that environment of being around good people, we find it easy to do the good thing. But then something changes, and we have a different set of companions, and these companions are not good. And because we want to please them, we start doing evil things. Um, say you change your job, and your new coworkers are full of, of impure thought, uh, talk and, and profanity. They use a lot of cuss words. And you didn't used to speak in a profane way. You didn't used to talk impurely. But now, because you want to fit in with these companions, you adopt these bad habits. You become bad in, in that way. Or we graduate from high school and we go to college, and we start to, to, to meet the, the students at the college. We find them to be very worldly. They're worldly in their dress. They're worldly in their speech. They're worldly in the entertainments that they view. And we, we want to fit in. We want to be a part of, of this crowd. And so we start changing the way we dress. We, we start changing the music that we listen to. We start changing the entertainment that we consume on a regular basis. We abandon 
our good habits of, of the time past. Another thing that, that can derail us from continuing in the good are trials and sufferings. Say we have the sudden loss of a family member and we're depressed, we're very sad. Sadness can often derail us from doing the good. Um, we don't feel like praying anymore. We don't feel like doing spiritual things. So we, we stop nourishing our spiritual life. Um, we, we, we stop fostering our connection to God. Or to take an extreme example, um, you, you say, say there is a girl and, and violence is done to her and, and she conceives a child from, from this violence. And it, it's this horrible crime has been committed against her and she has an abortion. She, she would have never become a murderer if, if this had not happened. This, this trial has been the occasion of her putting to death her own child. Sometimes it's a question of fear. Think about the, the COVID crisis where there was all this alarm about a, a disease and then later on it became clear it wasn't nearly as powerful as it was being portrayed, but so many people stopped going to mass. Um, they, they, they stopped associating with, with others out of fear for their physical health. And even later on, they, 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 they lost the practice of their religion to this day. There's some people who just never gone back to mass for all that time. So their, their concern, their fear for their physical health ended up destroying their spiritual health. They lost the practice of religion Sometimes it's a question of the loss of pleasure that we do not desire. Um, we anticipate that we will receive some pleasure and we desire this pleasure greatly. And we don't want to lose it. And in order not to lose it, we, we give up our good habits, our habits of virtue. Say you have a situation where a boy meets girl and they start to become fond of one another and they, they fall into impurity with one another because of, of that attraction. Before, they, they had the habit of purity. They were going along well, but this occasion of this attraction um, has led them to fall into mortal sin uh, be, because of their love of pleasure. They're not willing to deny themselves that pleasure and continue in the good. Or uh, the new technologies that have been placed in our hands, the, 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 the smartphones, the, the, the internet, which, which is placing before us all manner of, of entertainment and um, impure content. These, these devices didn't used to exist. You know? I mean, um, they, they were, there were no smartphones in the 90s, and we, we lived without them, and we weren't, we weren't consuming this content online. Uh, but, but now they've come. Now these, now these devices have come, and it has placed, placed this challenge before us. Am I going to continue in the good? Am I going to continue to, to remain pure um, in, in the things that, that, that I watch? Or am I going to fall into sin? And, and we have to make that choice, whether to continue or not. Sometimes it's the love of novelty and change. Doing the good can be boring. We, we, there's something about our human nature where anything that is routine and ordinary for us, over time, loses its attraction. And we, we need to continually motivate ourselves to do the good. Um, if we feel in ourselves, if we see in ourselves, we're, we're, we're losing an attraction to what is good, to, to prayer, to the practice of virtue, what have you, we need to make sure that, no, I am I, motivated to do these good things. Um, say you, you have a situation where... where uh, a couple, they, they, they love one another, they, they get engaged, they end up getting, getting married, they have their honeymoon, everything's wonderful, but over time, the, the routine of marriage sets in, all, all the, the sacrifices that are required of them. Uh, they start to notice the, the, that their, their, their spouse has this fault or that fault. Um, they, they start to become a little tired of their spouses or, or annoyed on a regular basis at, at their habits or idiosyncrasies. And the temptation is to allow their love to fade, um, to allow their heart to grow cold over time instead of maintaining themselves in the love 
that they should have for their spouse. Or the, the question of, of curiosity. The, the, our, our appetite for novelty is provoked by our curiosity. And, and we say, oh, there's this thing I've never heard about. Let me check this out. Let me explore this. When I didn't know about the thing, there was, there was no problem. But, but I started exploring it, and it's attracting me. It's, it's enticing me to the commission of sin. And I, I, I'm, I'm attracted to give up my good habits in order to explore this new thing, which is evil which is bad. These are examples that, that we can take of um, temptations to abandon our good habits. And there's a million others. You can think about um, our, our anger when, when we're provoked to anger uh, by, by some behavior of somebody. We, we, are, we, are, we are tempted to, to act in a nasty way, whereas before we were very friendly to this person. Or our pride, when our pride is hurt, um, how we, we might react in a, in a bad way when if our, if our pride was not hurt, we would continue being good. There's a million examples. What I'm hoping you're noticing is that there's a pattern in all these situations where a, a person does not persevere. First of all, you're kind of cruising down, you know, the highway of life. You're in your lane. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like, I'm, I'm a traditional Catholic, I'm, I'm going to Mass, I'm, I have a, a good spiritual life, then boom, something comes along. Some difficulty, something hard. It's like, in order to continue to stay on the road, I'm going to have to suffer. Doing the good sometimes is very difficult. It requires suffering on our part. It requires mortification. So there's this challenge Am I going to do the difficult thing and re continue to stay on the road, or am I going to veer and go off into, into the ditch? And we make that choice. We either continue to do the good, or we abandon it. This shows us that the virtue of perseverance requires strength. The primary thing that is required is strength. The virtue of perseverance is a, a type of the virtue of fortitude. St. Thomas Aquinas, he says, every virtue which has a title to praise for the firm endurance of something difficult must be annexed to fortitude. But perseverance is a firm constancy in the good when it's difficult, when you're tempted to do the evil. I just want to give you the, the example um, of, of the, the last times that our Lord presents to us in, in the Gospels. These we're going to be reflecting upon the last times in the next two Sundays. But our Lord depicts the, the end times and how many people are going to fall away precisely because of the extreme trials and difficulties that will happen in those times. Here's what he, he says in Matthew 24. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and will betray one another and will hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and will lead many astray. And because iniquity will abound, the charity of the many will grow cold. But whoever perseveres to the end, he shall be saved. So at the end of the day, there are many who are able to continue in the good when it's easy. There are some times in our life when it's easy to continue what we're doing and the doing, doing the good things. And then there are other times when it's very difficult. And it's, it's that difficult time when our love of God is proved, when we really show what strength we have or do not have, whether we are really attached to the good, whether we are really strong in the good. And it, it's, it's so important for us to foster that strength of soul, foster that love of good, and that perseverance, that inner resilience, where we cling tightly to the good no matter what the circumstances are. Another thing that St. Thomas speaks about in, in his question in the Summa on perseverance is he emphasizes that we cannot do this without the help of God. It is impossible for us to persevere through the course of our life. Maybe on one given day, we're fine. But through the course of our life, through all the years of our life, there is no way 
that we will persevere in the good without the assistance of God. Perseverance is something we must pray every single day for. Here's what St. Thomas says. Perseverance is called the abiding in good to the end of life. And in order to have this perseverance, man needs the divine assistance guiding and guarding him against the attacks of the passions. And hence, for any, after anyone has been justified by grace, he still needs to beseech God for the gift of perseverance that he may be kept from evil till the end of his life. I find it interesting how he speaks about this, that we need the divine assistance to guard us against the attacks of our passions. Isn't this what is, what is going on <coughs> in these difficulties that we experience um, as we're going through our life? Is that, that our passions are aroused and they are attracting us to evil. And we are very tempted to follow our passions and run off the course of grace into the, the ditch of, of mortal sin. And in order to stay on the, on the course, we need God's help. We need grace to come on top of our passions and, and assist us to direct us towards the right, right way, um, ignoring our passions. St. Thomas mentions, I, I think um, he might be quoting St. Augustine, but, but he, he says, look, you are able to persevere in sin, in evil, on your own. You don't need anybody's help for that. But to persevere in the good, you need God's assistance. Even if you're already doing the good, that doesn't mean you have the capacity to continue in good. If you are doing the good, you still need the help of God to continue doing the good. You cannot do it on your own without divine assistance. The collect of today's Mass is, is a very beautiful prayer that kind of emphasizes this, this beseeching of God to, to help us continue in the good. Um, I just want to read it to you. It says, O Lord, Almighty God, grant that always thinking about reasonable things, we may accomplish what is pleasing to you in our words and our deeds. Help me be reasonable in my actions, not following my passions and my emotions wherever they may lead me, but be reasonable and so do your will in each given thing. I just want to give you um, examples, an example from, from the Old Testament of, of a figure who persevered in the midst of, of a difficult trial and, and a figure who did not persevere in the good in a difficult trial. Um, the, the first is the patriarch Joseph, who, as you know, was sold into slavery in Egypt by his own brothers. And he was sold to the chief of the bodyguard of Pharaoh. And as the chief of the bodyguard of Pharaoh, he was placed as the steward, uh, managing all his, his affairs. And Joseph was a very handsome young man. And, and the wife of the chief of the bodyguard was attracted to Joseph. And she kept pestering Joseph, trying to tempt him into the sin of adultery. Scripture um, speaks about the persistence of, of this woman in trying to attract him to adultery. She urged Joseph day after day to commit adultery with her, but he would not consent to lie with her or to be with her. In the midst of this persistent, very powerful temptation, he resisted. He resisted. Um, he persevered in the good. He refused. He did not become an adulterer. And then, of course, as a result, you know that he was falsely accused and he was, he was thrown into prison. The other figure who did not persevere in the good was David. David, when his, his uh, men are away on, uh, engaging in a, in a war, um, and he's taking a nap, a long nap, he wakes up, and he looks out his window, he sees a beautiful woman bathing. And he's, the, the, the flame, the passion of lust is incited in him, and he desires this woman. And so he sends his servants to inquire who she is, and he gets the message back. This is the wife of Uriah. And he knows she's married. She's not available, but he refuses that. He does not listen to the voice of reason, 
and he commits adultery, which leads him to commit uh, the, the sin of murder, which leads him to commit uh, also other, other things that cause disaster for him. So my dear faithful, we, even if we're, seems like we're doing well, traditional Catholics, I'm, I'm going to mass, I have a, a prayer life, we must, must not rest on our laurels, but we must reinforce ourselves in the good. We must call upon God to, to assist us, to persevere, especially have in mind that, that we, not, we not only need to persevere today in doing the good, but we need to persevere for the rest of, a, of our lives. I particularly recommend at the time of communion, when we, when we have this closest contact with our Lord, to ask him for this grace of final perseverance so that the day that we die will also be the day that we, a day that we are in the state of grace. And so we may dwell with our Lord in heaven forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.